All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another Let's Play with Threat Gen Red versus Blue Cybersecurity Simulator Platform. I'm Gerald Ozier, a Director of Cybersecurity Education at Threat Gen. Uh, and today we are doing a fun one where we are going to be actually executing as Sandworm, the advanced persistent threat out of Russia. We'll, I'll be piloting inside the uh, simulation platform, executing the TTPs of Sandworm according to MITRE ATT&CK framework. I'm going to be educating you on MITRE ATT&CK on what the TTPs are. Uh, Sandworm has been around for a while, so I do want to caveat this that we will be executing under the kind of parameters, mission objective and TTPs of Sandworm when it attacked the Ukrainian electrical grid in 2015. Uh, we'll be doing a bunch of that. Now, just a little bit about Sandworm. Uh, let me, let me, uh, can I make myself a little bit bigger? Like, is that something we can do? Yeah, I, I kind of, yeah, there we are. There we are. Okay, so a little bit about Sandworm before we bring Clint Bodnudgeon in uh, to uh, commentate as I, I pilot the uh, simulation. Uh, Sandworm team is a destructive threat group that has been attributed to the Russia's General Staff Main Intelligent Directorate. You may have heard of them as the GRU. It's their main center for special technologies, military unit 74455. This group has been active since at least 2009, so a solid 13-year run. In Octo October of 2020, the U.S. indicted six GRU unit 7440, uh, 55 officers associated with the Sandworm team for the following cyber operations. And you can... You can Google this, right? If you Google, I think it's Department of Justice indictments. It's, you know, it's that classic like red header with the pictures on the side. This is what Sandworm team has been indicted on. The 2015 and 2016 attacks against the Ukrainian electrical companies and government organizations, which is what we will be simulating today. The 2017 worldwide not pet yet attack, which you may remember as looking like a ransomware attack, but it was a wiper. Uh, it targeted uh, Ukraine, but it actually spilled over. Maersk was one of the more well-known victims of that attack. It almost crippled their, well, it did cripple their entire global supply chain. Um, really interesting insurance case that came out of that. Uh, the 2018 Olympic destroyer attack uh, against the Winter Olympic Games, I think, I th where, where was that? Was that in South Korea? I, I, Clint will correct me afterwards, but the, the 2018, uh, 2018 Olympics, uh, and also the 2018 operation against the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons and the attacks against the country of Georgia in 2018 and 2019. Some of these, it's worth noting, were conducted with the assistance of the GRU Unit 26165, also referred to as APT-28. So what you need to know is this is not your new kid on the block apt in in fact i think that russia as far as the world of like cyber operations and apts go advanced persistent threats they are varsity right they are an a team capability and um as we're going to see today as we're executing this two, 2015 attack or attempting to right ai will be um trying to stop me in the blue team seat we will see how it goes, uh, but definitely an exciting opportunity to leverage the threat gen red versus blue platform to both understand how this type of attack could uh, operationalize itself and materialize, and also how a blue team might be able to defend it. But if if uh, if I have my druthers, we are going to absolutely destroy. Uh, the energy company that we're looking at. So let's get into it. Let's get Clint over here and let's have a good time. All right, Clint, how are you, man? You doing all right? I am. Got my coffee mug with bad swear words on it. And um, yeah, so I think you're going to not just destroy the blue team, but you're going to end destroy the blue team, right? Oh, nice little play on words there. Uh, APT 20, or not APT 28, but uh, Sandworm, also known for the uh, in destroyer uh, malware campaign. Um, yeah. That targeted uh, industrial control systems, if I'm not mistaken, is that right? 
Yep, yep, specifically and specifically the OPC uh, protocol. There were a lot of different aspects to it. There were the, um, there was a dropper that was meant was for information gathering. There was a command and control um, aspect to it. There were kind of like two or three different components, but the the part that was actually responsible for shutting down the the power grid was, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was it was OPC. It's an industrial protocol, OPC controlled, which was designed to uh, remotely control different aspects of the the, the grid, flipping relays and uh, messing with um, upstream down or messing with. Uh, anyway, there's we can get all technical into it. And and I just I did I do want to preference preface this by saying that yet that you know threat gen you know we were not in the research of that we don't know all the exact ttps in terms of the the d we're not the purveyors of the details of that you know that would be i i, I think that it is you know widely known that the the industry experts right now on the ttps for in destroyer and in destroyer 2 um is dragos and and so we're not and i am not portraying myself as a ttp expert on uh in destroyer or even um you know sandworm i think that this is simply going to be um, a demonstration um, of the TTPs in the red versus blue simulation to the best that we understand them. So that's, I think that's a, I need to put out that disclaimer. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's important to note that all of these, um, all of this is basically done uh, based on MITRE ATT&CK, right? So we'll look at MITRE ATT&CK in a little bit. But MITRE ATT&CK is the, you know, nonprofit or MITRE is the nonprofit think tank that helps uh, the U.S. government kind of organize things. And their attack framework allows for a taxonomy of te uh, tactics, techniques and processes of threat procedures, actors. procedures. Thank you. Of threat actors and a sandworm is one of those. So everything that we're doing today was pulled from MITRE ATT&CK and all of our guidance is pulled from MITRE ATT&CK. We're not, you know, um, what's it called? Freestyling. We're not freestyling here. So uh, just to give you an idea, this is Global Sign had this little artifact together, but this is the attack that we will be running with. It was a spear phishing malware attack run by Sandworm. Uh, they attacked, I can't say this victim's name, unfortunately, but um, I'll give it a shot. Kiev Oblenergo. Um, they were an electrical power supply to uh, either part or all of Ukraine. And Sandworm basically caused destructive um, consequences. They blew up uh, parts of their operation, which obviously led to a denial of service of that energy. So let's get into it. As always, I see uh, 41 of you, at least on the Threat Gen channel, many more of you coming over on a paired channel. Uh, you know, including Simply Cyber. So thank you so much for being here. As we play, as we learn, uh, feel free to drop comments in chat. We're here to have a good time. We're here to learn and we're here, um, you know, just to hang out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do single player since I will be the red team. I will play as the red team. We will do a, uh, I guess, what's the closest one, Clint? Uh, pipeline company? or manufacturing or large yeah capacity. since we don't well the problem is we don't actually have an electric utility um scenario yet that one's coming out but we don't have an electric utility scenario um in here yet so i would say probably large oil and gas company since okay. uh would be the closest since there's actually a SCADA system there and electric utility uses SCADA. okay my machine is a little chunky right now. Hopefully you guys can hear me and see me. Um, unfortunately, let me know. I might have to close some apps or something. I'm, I'm definitely chunky here. All right, so we're gonna start the game. Okay, now really quick while we're here, I wanna just show you guys um, what the kill, my kill chain is gonna look like, okay? That should say lateral in the middle, but basically we're gonna do OSINT, we're gonna spearfish, we will get a foothold in the organization, move laterally until we find the engineering workstation or HMIs. We will then take down the HMIs and we will win. Okay. Clint, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I think, uh, I think you need to be a little closer to the mic. You're just sounding a little roomy. Yep, how's that? I'll hold my mic right up here. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do some OSINT recon OVs. Okay, 
and we're not really worried about physical recon or any of that. Let's do some research as well. Sandworm is an incredibly smart, sophisticated threat actor. Uh, so let's choose which research we're going to do. We're not really interested in... Well, Clint, we will be doing spear fishing. So is there any particular research that would align to spear fishing success? Yeah, um, technical or sorry, electronic social engineering. Okay, let's do that. We want to get good at that since that's their main um, initial infection vector. Okay, electronic SE and continuing to look. Uh, Clint, will you take the um, our, our name our name cards off, please? It's under settings, yep. uh, just because it's covering up part of the the display here. Okay. Also, there was a question about what HMI is. HMI is human machine interface. Um, mm -hmm. And it's basically the screen by which the operators can monitor and view and control the industrial process, a terminal, mm -hmm. if you will. Exactly. So I can't really do anything except research something else and create malicious USB drives, which we're not going on site. So those aren't going to do us any good. And I'm reluctant to do evade network detection right now, which is something we're going to want. But I don't want to do it right now because it'll use up one of my two remaining resources. And I really like to max out my resources. So, Clint, any other research that might be a good one here? Um, they're very good at lateral movement. They're very good at installing persistence mechanisms. Yeah, so lateral movement is going to be based off of just general exploitation so mm -hmm. i mean and it's a toss-up right now because you don't have any visibility into what vulnerabilities you found so that research if I, may, is, if I may yeah if i may what about default credentials they do yeah i would they, say weak passwords weak passwords and default credentials are going to be two that you want to research uh, early and fast yeah okay and that's that's consistent with the ttps okay <clears throat> yeah and also so we, make sure persistence is going to be a thing too like persistence and ids evasion and that sort of thing Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I see you, Ian. Uh, where is it? Uh, Ian was just in jail. Ian Kincaid. I got that sandworm grind working my sandworm hustle. Okay, guys. So here, here is the, um, here is the kill chain that we're working on right now. I've got my OSIC going. I'm, I'm getting some research done to be more effective. So, uh, we'll keep on, keep it on. Let's try here. All right. We finished our uh, default creds research. It's good. I didn't realize that took one turn. All right, let's keep researching then. So not with not trying to get too um, political because that's not what we're here for. We're here for cybersecurity and education. But it is important to note that you know, the current conflict in um, Ukraine right now, it's 2022, this this attack was in 2015. So, the, the, you know, this most recent conflict is not anything new. Um, in fact, it, it's, it's unfortunately been going on for quite some time. I'm going to go ahead and research persistence. This is a four-turn move, but um, this is a hallmark of Sandworm. All right, so we got two minutes here. I'll take a moment and explain MITRE ATT&CK. So real quick, uh, Clint, if I leave um, full screen and go open another tab, is there a chance of the, uh, the gameplay getting kind of confused? No. Okay, cool. All right, so I just want to show this to everybody for just a moment. Now, you might want to pause the game. No, no, that's fine. I, I, I know it's what the timer is. I'm good. Okay. Okay, I'm just doing this really quick. So this is MITRE ATT&CK. If you Google MITRE ATT&CK with the ampersand in the middle, you'll see it. Um, I'm kind of zoomed in so you guys can see it, but they have all these different things. You can cut the data up all sorts of different ways. But under groups, you can see these are all the threat actor groups on the left. And if we go all the way down to Sandworm, You can see this is where 
uh, we have pulled our intelligence from in order to understand these TTPs, which is all these things right here. And I'm, I'm not going to go through it right now for you, uh, but trust me, I went through it yesterday and mapped all these things. You can see they go by other, uh, or they have other associated groups uh, that they play with. So MITRE ATT&CK, definitely, definitely a very useful resource. Okay, let's go full screen. And let's end our turn and see what happens. Bob Bob says that he enjoyed your interview, Clint, with Ken Underhill on CyberLife. I've also been on CyberLife. Uh, Ken Underhill is a great, uh, great yeah, member thanks, of the Bob cybersecurity Bob. community. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, Ken made his rounds through ThreatGen, but he did his interview with you before you joined ThreatGen. Oh, yeah. I, I'm like a neighborhood bicycle. I've been, I've been, uh, I've been all, all over the place <laughs> ish. Okay. We finished our electronic social engineering research. We've got our OSINT. We can begin scanning. Now, what I'm thinking here is, come on. I wish my computer wasn't so choppy right now. I can't close this, this display. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Can I, I, I'm going to try to close, I'm going to close Discord. I'm going to close Excel. Hold on one second. See if I can free up some system resources. I don't know if it'll make a difference, but. Okay. So here's the deal, guys. I have three available hacker resources you can see on the top left. These are my resources available to take actions. Just really quick across the top, uh, three out of 75. We have 75 turns to complete our objectives, which is to destroy the HMIs before, um, in this case, uh, Sandworm is detected. Uh, and this is our turn mover. Okay, so I'm going to do, with my three people, I'm going to scan from the internet, which takes one, and then I'm going to do some more research, okay? By the way, just want to throw out there that um, we are in the process of converting all of the different... Uh, groups from MITRE into AI profiles for different uh, tabletop scenarios within red versus blue. Nice. All right. So I'm going to do weak password also, Clint. Yep. yep. Cool. Yeah. You want electronic SE, default credentials, weak password, and persistence. Okay. And we've just started our scanning from the internet, uh, which is, you know, perfect for our, um, our threat actor. Okay. So just, just so we're uh, staying true to the TTPs and the kill chain that they've employed, we've completed our OSINT, um, and we're we're beginning we're beginning to look uh, for assets, and we will be spear phishing right after this. Once we start um, a little bit further along on our attack chain, you could see here under the action tree. Spear phishing's right here. So as soon as I free up um, my resources, three resources, we will begin spear phishing. What we should have done is started this uh, campaign or started this game. No, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, we, sh we should have started this game with, or the simulation, with a lot more red team resources because when you're backed by a nation state, you would have more resources. That's true. Why can't I close this menu? It's like frustrating me. There we go. Now, let me ask you, I mean, to stick to, I can't, This my, my computer is failing me right now. I can't move fast enough, but I was going to argue that we close these out and do spear phishing, but we can do spear phishing next time, okay? Yeah, I think if you're using a laptop, which you are because you're remote, um, doing restream with red versus blue uh, and other apps open will want to choke you up, even though we have significantly improved the performance of uh, the red versus blue, unless you're on a Mac. No, no. <laughs> Mac and actually, the WebGL don't get along. I'm actually going to uh, prop my, my my laptop up a little bit too, just so it uh, it can air condition a bit. Hold on one second. Yeah, we worked pretty hard on um, improving the performance. We found out that I think I mentioned this last stream. We found out that. Um, our, our engine that we work with, um, if you don't actually go in and purposefully and manually uh, limit the frame rates, it'll run away on you. So red versus blue is like running at a thousand frames per second, causing everybody's GPU to spin up like a helicopter. I love it. 
Okay, guys, so we have uh, done our initial OSINT scan. We found some devices. Spear phishing is the TTP du jour. So we will do some spear phishing now. As soon as I open the action tree. Come on. I, I will tell you that this is not normal interface behavior. It's usually much, much more snappy, but for some reason I'm having a tough time. Ryan asked in response to our comment about increasing resources, uh, asked if, if you start with more resources, red or blue, does it change the skill cost? It does not. So you can actually adjust. It's a, it's a way to, to adjust the difficulty levels for yourself of the simulation, um, by adding resources to whatever side you're playing, but also it simulates kind of real world circumstances. So like if you work for a company that has a lot of human resources, but lower budget, then you can increase the amount for the blue team. You can increase the amount of human resources you have at, disp at your disposal and decrease your budget. So you, you can do that. And it does not mess with the, the costs of the skills or anything like that or the actions. I love it. So uh, just so everybody is caught up, I've decided to do... Uh, the spear fishing, again, I, I, it's a, it's frustrating. Um, spear fishing attack, which is very much how they uh, took over a bunch of stuff. So we're going to hope for the best. We've got some assets here. Once our research clears up for persistence, we're going to start looking at these resources. Again, lateral movement is part of the... Um, of their thing. Dude, so Sandworm was very much big on... Uh, harvesting credentials, pilfering data, uh, establishing persistence, moving laterally, and then ultimately finding that engineer's workstation um, and then, you know, taking it from there. You can see all of our threat actor resources are hard at work, so we don't have anything to do today. Um, but Sandworm definitely, um, again, here, just, just to show everybody. OSINT spear push, get that foothold, lateral, not later, lateral movement, engineering workstation, take down the HMI and celebrate. That's the goal. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna end our turn. So Gregory Jones, that's actually a really good suggestion. So um, number one, um, yeah, like formulating an attack and creating an attack, basically creating your own scenario um, by creating an attack sequence and then defending against it, it is a good idea. Um, and then, of course, in order to do that, you would play red versus blue, human against human or team versus team uh, over the network and have the red team execute that attack while the blue team defends against it. That's a good way to use red versus blue. Also want to say what's up to Black Knight. I see he's in an area with bad service, so I appreciate you using your precious bandwidth to say what's up and be here with us. Hey, BSEC, good to see you. Always nice, Alex. Good one, Stella. I agree with you, the M1. I want it to work so badly, and it it, it, it regularly disappoints me. <laughs> hey, Carrie, uh, good to see you. All right, let's go ahead and end the turn. Yeah, we had M1 problems initially uh, with Red versus Blue, and we managed to get those fixed. I love it. We beat M1. All right, so check it out. Uh, we've completed persistence, which I want to share with the uh, chat. I have never done persistence before. I've never researched it, so this is pretty cool. Uh, I like that. We completed weak uh, password research, so let's let's look at that. It's. It, I feel like I almost have to find like the hot spot on the button. All right, we have two resources available. I think we're currently in the middle of a spear fishing campaign. Haven't gotten anything from that yet. You can see persistence is maxed out. Default creds is maxed out. Um, electronic SE and weak password. Um, Clint, question. I, I feel like we could do electronic SE to improve our social engineering spear phishing attack right now. Or um, is the spear phishing going to be done by the time we finish learning? Yeah, look at your action log. I'm, I'm trying to it's it's hey, you're definitely having computer issues yeah you see like it basically doesn't 
It doesn't see it as a button for me. Are you on a Mac? No, I'm still on a Windows yeah. machine. We'll get it sorted out. Yeah, Good thing we're... that we're entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we have, we're have we not having that issue in the interface. It's not an interface issue. I think it's a performance issue. Yeah, no. I mean, I played this earlier today, and it was fine. Like, it's definitely my machine. There it is. Mess. All right, so we have to wait one more turn for the spear fishing attack to even work. Um, so I'm almost interested in doing something that takes one turn. Let's do, let's do a couple scans. Okay. Right. Cause the spear fishing is going to end at the end of this turn and I want to have room to, to move, uh, based on what I find. Right. So we're going to do a little bit of, um, more recon. Justin Loken. Don't worry, J Justin. I'm a Mac user. I'm all up in Apple's ecosystem. So don't don't uh, don't lump me into this anti Mac establishment. But I just M1. I have audio issues all the time on my streams. Yeah, I mean, and, and the the fact of the matter is, we have had issues with um, Mac not playing well with WebGL, uh, which is what this is. It's web delivered uh, or the M1. So we did get it fixed on Steam, though. I think. I like it. Come on, one second. Jessica. All right. Ooh. <laughs> Jess, By the Jess way. says, uh, I said Jessica. Sorry, I meant, I meant to say Jess. Uh, Jess says you're playing, you're playing an APT in a country with limited web resources. It makes it more real. <laughs> That's a good point, Jess. I like it. And by the way, uh, shout out and congratulations to Jess Bishop, who just recently secured her first uh, cybersecurity job, breaking into the industry like a boss. Great job, Jess. I know you worked your butt off um, in order to achieve that accomplishment. So I'm very, very happy for you. Very proud of you. All right, guys. Just like Sandworm, we're operating at boss level mode. Spear phishing attack successful. We're cyber anglers. Let's see what we got. All right. Looks like we've got an end user workstation. No surprise there. Uh, let's, according to the uh, Sandworm playbook, we've got the foothold. Let's start looking for lateral movement, right? We have all five resources, by the way. So first thing we want to do um, is cover track. So here's another thing that Sandworm did very well. They were very good at hiding. They would delete log files that had anything to do with their attack. They would change their malware um, to have the same file name as, as existing uh, Windows executables. And basically, they did multiple things to hide in plain sight. So we're going to go ahead and cover the tracks because uh, we do have that persistent skill set, but we want to be extra good at it. So let's go ahead and cover the tracks and let us... Um, now, uh, they did do a lot of harvest credentials, Clint, uh, Mimikatz and as such. So, well, they may not run Mimikatz, but they, they were definitely pulling creds. So does harvest creds give us something uh, for, for lateral movement? Um, it's going to make, well, harvest creds is going to make social engineering and spear phishing uh, more successful. So if you're going to continue to pop boxes that way um, and... I there maybe that's pilfering data. Uh, harvest credentials also makes password attacks easier. I think so. Somebody on the back channel, remind me, um, Greg, Aaron, remind me if harvest credentials is for password attacks or for social engineering. I can't remember. I think I think pilfering data is for social engineering. Harvesting credentials is for password attacks. So okay. yes, it's going to make it uh, lateral movement easier. All right. Well, then let's do yes. harvest creds. Harvest creden harvest creds is for password attacks. Okay, well, that was part of their their bag uh, was password attack. So we'll go ahead and stick to that to to align with the uh, the objective. I'm just the product yeah. manager now. They don't let me write code anymore, so I don't remember this stuff. Love it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and end the turn and see what happens. You know what? Yeah, I asked my back channel, uh, which is my dev team and my test team, and we've got our fantastic beta testers here on the the stream with us. And and Alex actually just 
cr corrected me too, saying that I got them crossed up the first time. So I need to remember to ask our beta testers. They know the game better than I do at this point. <laughs> So we've gone ahead and successfully covered our tracks. Hopefully that doesn't mean that they can't discover us, but between our persistence skill set and our covering the tracks, we are doing all right. Now, one thing that I want to do, we have all five resources. I think it would benefit us to do evade network detection. Right? Yep. Just to get it. Just that's to get part it of the whole. Yeah, that's part of the. That's part of the whole stealth and persistence process. Yeah. And, and they were very good at that as well. Now another thing that they did really well, um, which we're not going to have the turn uh, serve it, the about the ability to do it right now. Oh, come on, but they basically <laughs> it didn't say reversing in the miter attack TTPs. But they were writing like basically kind of zero day type stuff. So for me, finding those vulnerabilities to exploit is essentially like reversing. Yeah, yeah. Finding, you know, when you do, well, you if you do reverse engineering and find zero days, that would in game in the simulation here, it would substitute of you writing your own zero days, essentially. Yep. Now, we can't do it until we do service enumeration. Uh, by the way, public vulnerabilities was something else that they took advantage of. And I can map these all back to TTP if anyone uh, disagrees with what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. So I am going to do service enumeration on one of these machines. And I have a question for Clint. As far as preparing covert attack, what does that map to? What is that exactly? That's going to make your next attack uh more stealthy basically oh okay like an actual full-on attack attack okay yeah yeah does, For, does that that's account? your that's your lateral movement and uh testers and dev team um does that include the uh, password attacks considering password attack is a relatively new mechanic so does covert attack and does it help make password attacks uh more stealthy if that's possible exactly and is that something that holds? So if I if I do this prepare covert attack and then I don't attack for five turns, does that still hold up? It or holds it up, yeah. Well, so your your prepare covert attack will stay active until you actually attack, no matter how long it is. Okay, okay. I'm gonna. And go password here. attacks cannot be con uh, covert because password attacks are password attacks. Most password attacks are, are either they're either going to be offline, like using like old school tools like John the Ripper or Hashcat, um, or they're going to be online brute force using Hydra or something like that. So there's really no stealthy way to do a password attack for the most part. I mean, you can go slow and low, but that's that's a whole different story. Okay. So what I've decided to do is study weak passwords a little bit more and scan one of these boxes. Okay. So we've completed full recon. So like our first um, step of our kill chain is absolutely completed. Uh, OSINT, we've successfully done spear phishing and got a foothold in the organization. So we've done uh, three of our um, objectives in the order that you're expected to execute them. Um, we are now looking for lateral movement and we're trying to find that engineering workstation. So hopefully luck be a lady and we can get that. So let's see right here. Full recon completed, network detection evasion prepared, service enumeration. We're doing all right, team. Okay, let me back up a little bit and see. I'm not I... sure if my answers, I see some people coming in on paired chat, uh, saying things in the chat, which is paired. So I don't know if I'm answering. I know that uh, Amigos182 asked, did I see malicious USB drop? Uh, and that is dope. Uh, yes, we do have malicious USB creation and drops in the simulation. I don't think it's part of the TTPs for uh, today's exercise. But um, let me know if you can see my response if you're coming in through paired uh, chat and let me know if you could see my responses in chat all right you can see all of our activities were successful which is what we thought we're still kind of being successful at what we're doing so i want to hide this log come on okay all right 
All right, so we've got a network device here. It could be the uh, the internet, uh, excuse me, the gateway firewall, which is fine. We have successfully covered ourselves up from here. We're not inter interested in ransomware at this time. Uh, we're not interested in harvesting credentials. In fact, we're ready to uh, exfiltrate data and do a host scan, okay? This is a classic, this was Sandworm's TTP. Get a foothold. Is exfiltrate Exfiltrate data just really associated with PL, Clint? Yeah. Yeah, okay, it so, is. Okay, so in the context of red versus blue, PL is profit and loss. You you start sucking data out, and that's bad for business because your sensitive information is out. This is really a, associated with espionage techniques, and Sandworm was not about espionage. They were about sabotage. So right. we're going to stay away from ex exfiltrating data. Um, now, pilfering data, you said... What's the difference between pilfer data and exfiltrate data? Pilfering data is going to get you data that improves your social engineering chances. Uh, okay. Exfiltrating data affects PNL. So yeah, exfiltrating data in the context of this simulation engine is, like you said, it is for uh, industrial espionage, bringing their PNL down for that type of wind condition. It, it doesn't actually help any of your other attacks. The exfiltrate okay. data does not. Pilfering data does help social engineering attacks. All right. And we've got our network detection evasion set up when we're ready. Um, so let's see what uh, scanning from our foothold looks like for our ladder. Holy jeez. <laughs> Going to have to zoom out on this one. Wow. Okay. Flat network. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Which means this that... Just be aware that if they decide to segment their network, you're going to lose access to a lot of stuff. Will I keep my foothold? Um, since that was found through spear phishing, you will not keep that because they're resegmenting the network and um, they're going to change the IP address scheme. So you'll have to get a new foothold. Can I? Is it worth doing spear phishing again then? I'd wait until just. No, because you're okay. going to yeah. You need to wait until they segment the network and then do it again. All right. Well, and then I'm just keep keep pumping that research that 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 electronic social engineering research. Keep pumping that. Okay. So I'll do that, and then I'm going to just scan three random boxes and just hope that I get a good one. Um, reason being, I, th this was like the lateral movement step, right? And now I'm looking for the engineering workstation or an HMI device, but because all I have is IPs, I don't know what's going on right now. So I have to pick three random ones, uh, like 195s. They're all 195s. So let's pick some numbers here, guys. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to grab ones all related to each other. I'm. I'm. So I know the game doesn't do this, and you guys can't really see it, but I'm choosing um, endpoints that have low fourth octet IP addresses, thinking in my mind that when a network engineer set this up, they carved out the first, you know, 200 uh, IPs or the first 50 IPs for, you know, IT infrastructure, OT infrastructure. So I'm kind of banking on human nature here more than anything else. But geez, guys, talk about a junk drawer full of findings. This is like when you come back from getting coffee and then you just like spray <laughs> your monitor with coffee. Speaking of, I might actually go get me some more coffee and then come back because there's just not a mug big enough in my studio, house, office, whatever you want to call this thing. Daycare. Welcome, welcome to my world, dude. French press before 8 a.m. Or 8.30. Yeah. All right, let's end the turn. All right, here we go. I bet by the time I get back from getting coffee, you will have lost all your okay. foothold. All right, so we found a Windows server. We found a Windows computer. You want me to drop you off, uh, Clint? I can do it. Okay. I, I can has ops. <laughs> all right. I'm going to have to keep looking, guys, uh, for machines. Now, this is a remote workstation, it looks like. I could do an attack. Uh, what's our skills looking like? Electronic SE, we're still working on. All right, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna keep looking basically here. A Windows computer, huh? Windows server. 
let's see. Okay, well then I guess I'll just keep looking. David E, my, my strategy here is just to find some systems. That way when I find them later, they pop up as what I as what I think they are. I'll continue to stick to the low IP address range. Windows Server is kind of interesting, right? Oh, here's a 28. Oh, there's a 19 right there. I missed that one too. Okay, here we go. Hey, Kimberly, hashtag team replay. I got you, Kimberly, I got you. All right, guys, turn 12, still, we're still rock rocking it. Oh boy, we got the AD server. Now this does not actually map to Sandworm, right? So I'm not really interested in AD. In fact, I really don't want to uh, call attention to myself, frankly. All right. Kimberly, I saw US Cyber Game stuff. I posted it online earlier today. Love what they're doing. Love that you're involved with US Cyber Games. Do you want to share with us any type of uh, upcoming event or activity that's going on there? I know I'll be attending at, uh, during Black Hat DEF CON week, uh, an eSport event hosted by US Cyber Games. Oh, we have five resources. Hmm. What does the disruptive malware do? Install malware on an asset that increases the company's profit loss meter decline. I'm not really interested in that. Um, harvest creds. They did do this. Did I already harvest creds off this machine? I, I need to look. Let's look, because if not, I need to harvest creds off this guy. Thanks, Kimberly. All right, we're looking to see if we harvested creds at any point. Oh, Pilfer data failed. Interesting. We did not harvest cred. Oh, we did, and it failed. Okay, so let's let's try harvesting creds again, and we'll do a little bit more research. Come on, get out of here. Oh, you can only do it once. That stinks. Thanks, David. Okay. So, hey, welcome back, Clint. You still have your foothold. I know. Well, I'm being like, I'm kind of like hanging out because I want to. I'm like, I don't want to overcommit until the segmentation happens. Ooh, that's... Yeah, I mean, you know, and it may not. Uh, I don't know. Has anybody ever played a game where the blue team just did not segment at all? before you I mean and quick wins don't count yeah and I just want to point out also that like even though I'm not playing this as with the knowledge of how the blue team could operate I am still operating the sandworm because they technically did a lot of lateral movement I'm looking for the engineering workstation right now I'm literally executing the TTPs so yeah and I would think according to the TTPs here keep working your lateral movement and don't worry about trying to get another foothold through spear fishing right now. Oh, and there it is. Oh, I should have just, I should have gone to the restroom too. Access is cut off, but we're okay. We should have some visibility still. Come on. There's like Come a on. two or three second delay on your arrow there. Yeah. All right, so we still have some assets. Let's go ahead and look at what we got. And uh, our spear fishing is pretty solid still. We so didn't get a, we didn't get an Easter egg for that remote user. Not this time. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do another spear fishing campaign. As soon as I can. Yep. Okay. Spear fishing attack. Three people. Three turn. While we're doing that, we can. Um, enumerate these devices and figure out if we can compromise them for getting in and then doing lateral movement. Okay. Oh, there's an Easter egg there, actually, but I can't call it out because it's somebody's handle. 
Okay. So David E. David E. is in chat, and I want to let you know, David. Oh, I see oh. you. I see had... you, David. Yeah, there's two uh, two Easter eggs there that I see. I see you, David. So I'm going to keep doing this research on these two devices, but I'm about ready to start looking for public vulnerabilities or reverse engineering, which is, um, again, public vulnerabilities pretty pretty clearly spelled out in the TTPs. Uh, reverse engineering not explicitly called out, but they did write custom software for exploitation. So I feel like somebody over at the GRU uh, reversed it. I'm going to, since we have two minutes and that was a quick turn, I'm just going to look through chat really quick. Um, <laughs> that's really funny. Having Carl as a blue we, remote user. We do actually, funny. we do have Carl. We ju it just didn't, uh, it didn't show up this time. Oh my God. You still got two there. You still got two there. So I know, I know. I'm going to have to make a Carl, uh, shirt for, I I'm like big on shirts right now, Clint, big on the, on the, on the shirts. Uh, and a Carl one is desperately needed. I, I, I we really are going to make a red versus blue carl shirt okay <laughs> red versus blue something like it was carl or something it was carl know. yeah exactly it was carl it's uh th that's an easter egg okay let's go ahead and end the turn yeah you need to scan those other two hosts just I to just... see what they are <laughs> you did. yeah i'm scanning them one disappeared so he must have come off the network um this is a Windows computer. Let's go ahead and do a service enumeration. And then with our remaining uh, skill uh, or, you know, human resource, whatever you want to call it, let's find those public vulns. So on the shirt, do we just do we just do text or do we do a visual? And we probably can't use the actual Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. So. No, no definitely can't. But simply cyber can. <laughs> <laughs> Simply Cyber runs loose. All right. Let me see. Rogue operator. Rogue operations. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe I'll message Aqua Teen Hunger Force and ask if they mind if I make a Carl shirt. I'm sure they'll be cool. I'm sure Adult Swim has totally not got a million lawyers uh, behind them. You know, but you know what is cool? Um, I am first level network connections on LinkedIn with the creator of Red versus Blue, the Halo version by a ro rooster. Wait, what's the name of the company that produced product company something rooster anyway but uh that's awesome bungee bungee games wasn't it but no i mean but the actual red versus blue uh youtube video series with uh halo oh. anyway oh cool hey looks like i don't know if this is our spear rooster fishing teeth, attack that's it. i don't know if this is our spear fishing attack or not but we have successfully compromised an asset and um uh, this one's back online. Here's Deb. So since we have one, we're going to go ahead and do a host scan and cover our tracks. And uh, and then do a service enumeration on that one machine. So let's go ahead and cover our tracks. Let's go ahead and do a host scan for lateral movement. And let's do a service enumeration. Guys, in the world of red teaming, I know that there's like a million cool, sexy things you can do. But when you get into like the, you know, I guess the the grind of it, it's a lot of rinse and repeat. Yep. I mean, there is a hunting aspect to it. There's a puzzle solving. There's a, you know, back when I used to do red teaming, um, and I, I did pen testing is kind of boring. Uh, it, it can be fun, but doing full red team is the fun part because that's where you're actually um, doing the hunting and the evasion and hiding from blue team and. Uh, and all that but there you know there is there is a problem solving aspect and trying to hunt and figure the vulnerabilities and figure out the right way to get it to exploit and stuff like that so it, it there is a rinse and repeat but at the end of every rinse cycle you get to the fun part this is wonderful so now we've got our uh previously compromised asset which we did cover tracks we've got deb here with covered tracks we found a bunch so now now I just need to execute the uh, the model here. I've got five resources. I'm going to use all five to search all five of these machines, and hopefully one of them, um, one of them's a Linux or one of them's an embedded system. And this, 
you know, I wasn't there in 2015, obviously, but I mean, this, this is a pretty reasonable, this is pretty so reasonable of what could have You're happened. on the way. Yeah. I think ultimately, if you're really talking about then the, the, the specific end destroyer campaign, you've got to get to that industrial control system. But it doesn't matter. We're not running on an electric grid in here anyway, so it's not going to be the exact end destroyer campaign. No, no. And again, this is for educational purposes. This is at a strategic level. Um, you know, so this is very, I would say this is very similar to what happened in 2015. It's not, you know, keystrokes exact, but it's it's similar. Yeah. Okay, so we got Isaiah 58 is the other re remote user. We've got a bunch of devices that we've uncovered. Um, we're going to keep looking, okay, guys? We've got a couple more of these um, devices that we don't know what they are. We just see that they're uh, endpoints. I was hoping for a Carl. We got Isaiah, though. There are a lot of people here who know who I is. That's, that's an Easter egg, too. Isaiah is an Easter egg. I don't think Deb is an Easter egg. I don't think Steph is an Easter egg. I mean, for me personally, it is. My sister-in-law's name is Steph, but we didn't do that purposefully. Hmm. So, and we've now we've got some vulnerabilities also um, on some of these devices. We can attack and compromise. We already have two footholds. These are likely remote users, so I'm not super interested. We have a covert attack loaded, so I, I'd really want to spend that on a very, you know, special uh, opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and search this these two network devices too, because if one of them is the firewall into the uh, PCI, uh, PCI. Um, the PLC <laughs> network, I want to, you know, take advantage of that too. All right, let's see. So also I ran a poll on LinkedIn on which threat actor to emulate and uh, y'all choose Sandworm. But I, I, you know, just for chat while we're kind of in between steps here, what other type of APTs would you be interested in seeing or uh, simulations? Blue blue or red. Uh, the red ones are a little bit easier because of miter attack and stuff like that, but definitely curious what people are interested in out there. Okay, we found a server firewall. We found uh, this switch to the corporate network. Okay. We had the AD server earlier. I think you went and got T, Clint, but coffee this time i'm on a call i'm back on my coffee kick but although i still do my tea in the afternoon and evenings okay colombian colombian i loved my time in colombia so much that like i'm stuck on colombian coffee now and actually did the juan valdez tour nice all right i'm just i'm i'm searching all of these Okay. North Korean APT, we could do that one. Uh, the most famous North Korean APT is the Lazarus group. Um, red versus blue doesn't really set itself up well for financial crime theft uh, because that's, honestly, that's kind of an unusual scenario. It's, it's like, on the way. We have, a, we, we have a, a, a financial network environment on the way. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, B sex next quarter. Says, next quarter. <laughs> it's on the roadmap. Yes, <laughs> it's on the roadmap. Um, yeah, uh, Stuxnet would be a good one. It's kind of funny. I haven't checked Mitre Attack to see if I mean Mitre is a U.S. based company. I don't know if Equation Group is a <laughs> is documented. We're not allowed idea. to do Stuxnet here at ThreatGen. Okay, well there you go. B it's against. It is. It is. Stuxnet has been blackballed. It's okay. a, that it's just a drinking game now, um, so yeah, I you should to follow the the protocol of the TTPs for Sandworm. You should mm -hmm. try to compromise that firewall, which will get you into the DMZ. Oh no, there you go. Compromise the D uh, the DMZ. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the the VPN. Compromise the VPN that'll get you to the DMZ. Okay. Well, I have all five resources. If if I do reverse engineering right now, Clint, will that give me zero days on everything or just certain devices? I mean, not, no. not, not to say like everything, but like it's going to cover all yeah, assets. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yep. All right. Well, let's do that because again, this is another one of those like really expensive actions that normally I wouldn't name, but you know, APTs are going to APT. Oh, you know what? Uh, Greg just reminded me. I don't, I can't believe I didn't see it. Um, you already have remote user. Do a host scan from a remote user, and that'll give you uh, an, an access to visibility into the DMZ. Those remote users are in the DMZ because there's a VPN. Oh, okay. Well, let me do my reverse engineering, which is going to take all my assets. Yeah, yeah. But but I hear you. I don't think our remote users are going to go anywhere. We've got a ton of them. All right, so we're just going to sit and chill for a few turns here, people. Uh, what do we have? I saw someone say. Yeah, Alex, good point. Um, you know, we, we could have recruited hackers earlier to increase our resources. Yep, we definitely could have. I we stand by. I stand by what I said. We should have just started with more resources as a nation state sponsored. A, mm -hmm. uh, group. Start with 30 resources. Yeah, yeah, or as as the the intelligence community calls them, or I don't even know if it's the entire intelligence community, but I but Dragos certainly calls them activity groups, not threat groups, activity groups. That's right, that's right, Rob. I'm poking at you on purpose. Uh, but yeah, they're they call them activity groups. It's like it sounds like what my kids did in elementary school. Like, okay, in today's activity group, we are going to play soccer um, as opposed to threat groups. Yeah, I know FireEye calls, uh, they'll call out APTs. FireEye is the one that has all the funny names like uh, Cozy Bear, Fuzzy, Fuzzy Bear, etc. But um, if they don't know what it is, they'll call it an UNC, an unknown. Um, it, it's UNC. I forget what the C stands for. I think it's like unknown national or unknown nation something. But anyways, let's go ahead and end the turn. Uh, we haven't done Fuzzy Bear. This is the first uh, Russian APT we've done. Um, what was the other one we did the other day, Clint? Um, we did a uh, oh, Wizard Spider, Conti yeah. Ransomware Gang. Don't Which ask me to think like three weeks later. I know. Well, it's, you know, depending on what you come, where you're, where you're coming from, you could consider Conti a Russian threat actor, but they're, they're more financial gang, crime gang versus this sandworm which is uh essentially an extension of the military all right so we've got all our dmz users up here we've got a nice little network diagram going oh oh you realize um you and i have a meeting right now jerry we should cut we should just cut the stream right now and jump on this meeting that only you and i have together oh let's push <laughs> let's push i see that right now i saw that come up and i was like oh what is that okay let's push it the, the people have spoken, Clint. There's 50 <laughs> people in here with us. The people have spoken. Yeah. We're going Natty TI-90. There's another uh, potential Easter egg. All right, here we go, guys. We got all our resources. We're about to complete our reversing. It's going to look pretty sweet. We're laying dormant. Drop oh, everything. Yeah. Put Carl in charge. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Carl, I'm telling you that. right now, mm -hmm. like if, you know, for the next positions that we're hiring for, if somebody applies and their name is Carl, I'm hiring them immediately. There you go. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> I've been I've been banging the drum on networking, doing labs, practical skill development, but apparently just a name change is all you need. Yep. All right. So we have done reversing. Um, we need to... I guess enumerate these guys and I really got to get my way over it. I feel like, here's my thing. I feel like I found the corporate network. I need a VPN. So I need to find, um, the engineering workstation. Why can't I scan from these guys? Oh, cause I got to scan the compromised host. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let's scan from here. And let's scan from here, okay? And let's hope for the best.
Okay, here. We oh, we found a bunch more assets. Very nice. Okay. We're just, guys, we're just slowly marching along. We're just slowly marching along. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, Here's a one dungeon. of those devices. What? J Bo Dungeon. Dungeon. There's nobody in my family with the last name Bo Dungeon that starts with J. So, um, so. Yeah, you want to find the firewall that goes into the process control network or find the terminal right. server in the DMZ and hope they haven't fixed uh, the remote desktop. Mm, I see. Okay, well, I've got five new assets here, so let's take a look at what we got. I've got five resources, five assets. It seems like a, it was meant to be. Yes, be sick. I am in Houston. Depend. I don't know your real name. It's probably we've probably run into each other in real life. Maybe I don't know. Maybe at a DC seven one three or two eight one or at a conference, Husecon or something. Connect with me on LinkedIn and throw me a direct message. If we're not already being a threat actor, it's hard work. Yep, yep. Get those stretches in. So wait, you you don't have? Oh, that's never. Mind. I was gonna say you you have the threat gen polos. You don't have the threat gen t-shirt, but you do. We just didn't have your size. You you little little man. <laughs> hey, big things come in small packages. You're my you're my polar opposite. Well, I'm not polar opposite because we're the same I, height, Clint. I just, I just. But you're the tiny ver You're you're the tiny, better looking version of me. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Oh, good. Okay, so we found some devices. We're going to go ahead and do service enumeration on all these five. Oh, we can't. Why can't I? It's mm, weird. Because you lost your remote. Look, you've got no remote user. The, 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 your compromised remote user logged off or it's been fixed. Oh, crap. I'm only seeing okay. there's four remote users, which means one is logged off and you had one fixed. Okay, well, I scanned. Okay, god damn. All right, so I guess I need to compromise another person. Yeah. Um, well, can I take over this thing? This would be the ideal, right? Pop Taking that DMZ. whole VPN. I mean, huh? pop the VPN. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to attack the VPN right now. Um, outdated firmware. Oh, yeah. Since you don't I mean, have zero days. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I feel like that is kind of on brand for them. They did yeah. do some firmware um attacking yeah so let's go for it hope for the best guys because i did send three assets to get this network detection evasion and yeah uh alex is right you need to port scan the network you need yeah you need to port uh, service enumerate the network device that's a firewall or a switch or something you get those network devices to start giving you access into the well of course um never mind he tried alex he couldn't because he didn't have access hey your remote users back online oh good Thank you. So that this is actually a great experience. I'm not a seasoned red team pen tester, uh, but Clint's right. Like this is very tempor uh, temporal. Um, you know, now that this guy's here, I should be able to scan these things, right? And yes, yeah. I can. Yeah, pop so those you've got to You've got to be uh, vigilant about, um, what do they call it? Um, like N Neil Bridges always talks about the OODA loop. It's always about like, orientating yourself, observing what is going on. It changes from moment to moment and making sure that you're taking full advantage of it. So uh, even though I did a, I did an attack and it failed, um, I almost got kind of the benefit of the attack by regaining visibility into the network. we got a so, question here from Gregory about taking over. A, um, yeah, uh, there is a router. Um, so the... The router is a sore subject right now in game. Um, it doesn't. If you if you pop the router, then you do get I think visible access, but not proxy control of um, other devices and other zones. 
but I'm not sure whether or not it can be a pivot to those other. The, the router works weird in this game. If you pop a router, I don't. Even though you can see network devices in other zones because of the routing tables, I don't think you can pivot from the router to those other zones. I would have to double check that. Um, also, Bob Bob asked uh, who is controlling the AI. That uh, is that a joke or a serious question? Because you've been here a while, Bob Bob. So I think. Uh, but anyway. The um, you've been on several streams, um, but the AI is controlled by the AI code. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's an engine. It's a it is computer controlled. Okay, so here's the deal. I've I've kind of found everything. It looks like I have you know, a lot of visibility in the DMZ. I just found these devices, so I can't really do anything with them. This terminal server is very interesting to me. Um. I need to, I guess, yeah. a, a vulnerability in this would be good. I can also um, attack this DMZ server, but I didn't so have a vault for it. Your priority right now should be seeing if you can pop that um, terminal DMZ. server. Uh, well, so either one. Popping the terminal, terminal server, if they have not fixed the uh, RDP, will give you immediate access to the EW, which gives you immediate access to the PLCs. Um, popping the firewall will give you access to the process control network. Okay, well, I'm thinking I could do a password attack on this. I did spend um, I did spend some credits on weak password discovery, default creds enabled. So I feel like it's kind of like taking a flyer, right? Whether or not this is vulnerable to those type of attacks. Wait, say again, I was reading okay. chat. What did you say? I have studied weak, def weak, weak credentials and default creds, so I could do a password attack on this, but it's almost like taking a flyer because it, it has the vulnerable to those type of attacks right now, right? I mean, yeah, you don't, I don't know if there's a vulnerability to it or not. Yeah, that's just, that's a chance. Yeah, it's a chance you're, you're taking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I'm also going to do some... Uh, yeah, and I would say, yeah, uh, Greg is telling me, and I agree, and I think the beta testers would agree that it's very likely that RDP has probably already been patched on the terminal server. Huh. We'll find out. I'll just say, like, you know, Sandworm is sophisticated, but they still have to do some trial and error, right? They, they don't know yeah, definitively. Yeah. yeah, as is every red team. Mm -hmm. Unless you got an insider. Definitely something we're working on uh, simulating here, but. Uh... All right, so the password attack failed as, you know, I'm sure Greg is yelling at his computer right now. I no, Greg you. actually suggested trying it. Okay, so we are doing uh, some fuzzing, which will end next turn. My computer does seem a little bit more uh, snappier since I've elevated it to cool off. Um, we can do a password attack on the dmz oh i guess we can't do that oh because our you lost your pivot all right maybe i'd we say try to come yeah pop that pop vpn this one i I've, yeah. i i attacked this one already you can't maybe do a attack password any, attack? yeah try it you can't attack anything right now so uh that has that takes five resources so password attack was fine okay fuzzing successful now That's you got good. some zero days Cool. Good. Okay. Deb's back, which is great. Um, I, okay, hold on. I can attack this terminal server using a zero day format string error. Yeah, you got no skills in zero in format string errors, but you do, but it is a zero day. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go ahead and actually study this, like do a little bit of research, right? I mean, Sandworm is an advanced persistent threat active they are sophisticated they definitely have done the research right like i feel like cn worm isn't trying to like as rapidly take down something as possible right they're they're um they do the research and they they're you know what i, mean? I just so attack gonna, it i just attack I'm, it i'm gonna do this the, i'm gonna do the research okay i'm gonna do the research and i'm also You're driving going... i'm just in the back seat well my argument is that um they would be advanced, right? So then I think that they would start off advanced too, though. But 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 you're right. You're right. You're very correct in that. If there's something they don't know, they would go and research and do their et cetera, et cetera. And 
I mean, all right. So, yeah. Hold on. So I'm looking at the DMZ firewall. Here's this is the same error, right? Mm -hmm. Or same zero day. So I'm actually getting two for one value on that, which is awesome. Um, the DMZ recorder. Jerry using um, the price club strategy. Okay, heap overflow. Let's study that really quick. And maybe one host scan from somewhere. What can I host scan from? Oh, De Deb's here. Well, Deb's here. I think you already host scanned from Deb, I think. You're not going to get any more stuff out of the DMZ. Okay. Host scan. All right, well, what can I do with one token? My last token at the arcade. Let's see if I can do anything valuable. Find public vulnerabilities. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Come on, man. Action tree. You can also try it from the... It's less clicks to go from the... Nah, never, no, it's not. Never mind. The bottom left. It's not, any, it's not any less clicks. It's just quicker because you don't have to scroll. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Okay. All right, so we've still got one um, action because we're waiting for our, our things to resolve. Um, I feel like host scanning from the internet's not really going to provide us any value. I think you found everything from the internet. Yeah. Here, let me just look in the action tree because I, I can't really think of anything useful to do with one resource right now. You can get a minimally effective uh, research. I think, no, I think all the research weak. Pa well, you can always continue to do weak password, I think, or is that a one shot? I can't remember. In in install disruptive malware is really around PL. That's not really anything I'm interested in. Um, yeah. I almost don't want to install it because, again, like Samworm, I don't even want to call attention to my compromised host. Yeah. Did you cover your tracks on everything that you've compromised so far? I did, yes. Okay. Come on, man. There we go. All right, so I guess we're going to... It's. This is uh, my first time losing a resource. I hate losing a resource, guys. Um, you know, this hey, guy... I can do even hackers got to eat. Put them on lunch break. All right, all right. You get this turn off, comrade. Yanya Govarupa Ruski. Okay, come on. End turn. There we go. Oh, whoa, whoa. Developer in the house. Developer in the house. Whoa. What's up, everybody? I'd like to call your attention to Aaron Shabib. <laughs> now he's going to hate you. Aaron Shabib in chat. Hello. Company founder and developer. All right. So we just. We've, all right. So we finished our, our code overlord. Form. All right. Let's do our attack on the. Uh, on the uh, terminal. server. What do you think, Clint? DMZ firewall, a terminal server. We're trying to get like to those HMIs. Firewall. DMZ firewall. Because uh, at this point, I feel like that. The terminal server is probably patched. Here we go. I hope I can spend my next turn's credits on uh, covering my tracks. And we have the evade network detection right here. So this guy is looking good. Looks like it failed. Boo. All right, let's see some more format string um, error studying. Okay, got a little, a little aggro there. Um, let's look at some more assets and see if there's uh, value in zero day research. Yeah, Stella, we don't eat and hack. We don't do that. We don't do that here. Keep overflow. We'll do another one of those. And there's our one little lonely resource. Um, what we're gonna use it for. You know what? Just for the lulls, we're gonna host scan from the internet. <clears throat> We got, you know what? Here's the deal. Not everybody starts off as like a senior APT, right? We've got a new private in the uh, GRU. Hey, rookie, go ahead and run an Nmap scan from the internet. 
get used to like what the results look like okay so that's what that dude's doing hey so there's a question from aaron kg mm -hmm. when is the mobile version of version of this game coming out i'm gonna tell you mm -hmm. i'm gonna tell you the mobile version of this game will come out for android and uh iphone whenever we get our seed funding or if or i can add it as a stretch goal on the kickstarter campaign which i'll make an announcement about next week okay cool that's exciting part of the reason i come to these streams find out about stuff like this hey where do i do uh public vulnerability research which one of these buttons uh, I think OSINT uh, under the um, uh, reconnaissance. Click it with intention. Nope. What? what? I thought, uh, or exploit preparation. Where's, uh, where's it at? Where's it at? It's, it's all right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm exploit preparation, I think then. My, my old tried and true. This is definitely like my browser issue, not, this is not normal uh, behavior. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do another public phone scan. Hey, rookie, nice job scanning from the internet. Now go to exploit-db, see what you can find. You know, that's a good point. So Aaron KG says, you know, they look forward to the link to the Kickstarter then. So here's the deal, real quick, quick poll. Just, you know, give me, give me a, uh, just type a, type Y if you think that you would be interested in backing a Kickstarter to extend Red versus Blue uh, in many ways to include possible a mobile version. I'm just, I'm just curious to see if, you know, what the community okay. thinks. Clint, if you want, um, if, if you go to studio.youtube.com, you can go into the broadcast and, and in the broadcast studio in YouTube's back end, there'll be like a chat window and then you can create a poll that people can like vote on. Oh, and what, what's the link there? Uh, go to studio.youtube.com. Okay. Okay. All right. So guys, I'm, I'm just continuing to do my, um, and then Clint, once you see the live thing, there'll be like, uh, a dot with the like the little it looks like a wireless a, wireless ap logo and you can click on that to go into the broadcast studio you're going to want to mute it because the audio will be reverberating and then you can um on the right under the chat you can create a we have oh. almost 1500 subs by the way yeah we're crushing it we're crushing it especially because we had a thousand like a couple days ago so <laughs> way to go everybody cheers yeah. thanks for joining us every week by the way yeah um Okay, guys, so we've got the shield that's cracked and totally on fire, so I'm feeling really good about our ability to take these things over. So let's go ahead and attack the DMZ firewall with a uh, zero-day format string. Let's go. All right, I'll see. I'm in studio. Somebody remind me. I'm where, Where's my Where's my poll? Where can I create a poll? Okay, so you're in the studio. Are, like, are you in the broadcast studio for this broadcast right now? Oh, no, I would have to... So go to content, I think, and then you'll go to live, and then the top one will say like the, this broadcast, ah. basically. Then hover over the, the options. There's like four options. One of them looks like a wireless AP symbol. Analytics, wireless AP, nope. view in live control room. Yes, that's the one. There it is. Now on the far right will be chat. On the bottom yep. looks like a like a spreadsheet bar graph, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's a poll. Go ahead. Oh, it's very nice, right? I can learn. This old dog can be taught. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Our attacks are not working, which totally stinks. Um, we failed at finding public vulnerabilities, which stinks. Aaron Shabib. Oh, hey, by the way, um, next time we play, whether it's uh, Lazarus Group or it is, um, you know, some other threat actor, we should log in as somebody else. I swear to God, Aaron Shabib, lead developer, code uh, overlord, has put in special code around my user account. All right, let's attack using format string zero day on a different system. Surely multiple systems with zero days that I have advanced research in would, would not prevent me from attacking.
Come on. Let's go. All right. I think the poll got posted. All right. For those watching on Threat Gen's YouTube channel, please advise. You'll see like a blue kind of uh, light blue box at the top of that chat if you did it correctly. Yep. Yep. I'm seeing people answer it now. Cool. Come on. End the turn already. All right. Here we go. What's up, user 6721? Good to see you. Oh, boy. Hey, gentlemen and ladies. Successful attack. We have took over the terminal server. See what you got. Nice. All right. So and no way. No, no RDP. What well, can I do? Host scan from here? Yeah. But okay, guys. It does, you're still in the DMZ. You're not going to get anything in the process control network. Terminal right. server is in the DMZ. Just to remind everybody what we're doing here, if you jumped in late, we are emulating Sandworm, the Russian advanced threat actor uh, who has been responsible for numerous high-profile attacks since 2000. Well, they've been around since 2009, but the attack that we're emulating is the 2015 Ukrainian electrical grid attack uh, attributed to Sandworm against Ukraine. We are following this kill chain of OSINT, spear phishing, getting a foothold, lateral movement to find the engineering workstation or HMI devices, and then destroying those HMI devices, which is exactly what happened in 2015. Looking at our gameplay here, this uh, remote end user right here was spear phished. This uh, on-premise end user was spear phished. We have started moving laterally, which is why we found all these devices. We're using public vulnerability and reverse engineering techniques to find exploitation uh, cap or options. And we've exploited and compromised the terminal server just at this last turn. I want to go ahead and cover my tracks because I definitely don't want to be discovered. That would be embarrassing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do another uh, zero day uh, research because we need to pop this... Um, we need to pop this this DMZ firewall. We're basically blocked in because of network segmentation right now. You're the still dependent option... on that remote user, though, as your pivot point. So every time that remote user logs off or if they clean it, you lose your pivot. So at some point, you're probably going to need to pop that DM, uh, DMZ uh, VPN. Fair, fair. Let's see what uh, zero day. There was no zero days in here. There was just outdated firmware, which we were unsuccessful last time. Maybe we try it again after this turn or after two turns from now. Or oh, oh, my bad. Uh, you don't need to pop the VPN because you did pop the terminal server as a lateral movement. That gives you the back channel. So you're no longer dependent on that uh, remote user. You could leave the VPN alone. Okay. I mean, I have... Isn't this right here evade network detection? Doesn't this mean that I have evade network detection? This thing up here, this guy? Yeah, hover on that. It says temporary resources. Uh yeah, but the if you hover, hover yeah, yeah, if you I hover I, Yeah. It says network detection. Uh evasion. you barely missed it. No, yeah, it's it said evade network detection. Okay, but I attacked that terminal server. I'm surprised it didn't give me credit for that. Okay, I mean, I'm surprised it didn't take it away. I am playing against AI, 6721. I'm emulating Sandworm. Uh, tracks covered, hopefully. That's a good sign. We do have persistence learned, uh, so we're good there. Okay, so here's what we can do. Um, we could do a couple things right now, guys. We could try a password attack on the gateway firewall. We could wait one more turn for all five of our assets to open up and then attack the gateway firewall. We could do a host scan from this terminal server, but Clint seems to think that this is behind a network segmentation. It so, is behind network segmentation. So you need to pop that DMZ firewall. Okay. Well, I need, um, I'm getting some intel here from my team. Uh, where is the, so I have evade network detection, but there's prepare, where is it? It's perfect. It's three turn prepare covert attack. That's really what we need to be doing. Yeah. And I know yep. it takes three turns, which sucks, but it is what it is. We'll actually next turn finish doing our research. And what we'll end up doing is we'll start researching this gateway firewall vulnerability because if we lose our. Ooh. 
we might even be able to attack this because if we lose our our uh, compromised endpoint, we're we're gonna need another way in. Okay, here we go. Come on, man. There we go. See, look at that. We got seven people so far that said they would back a Kickstarter pan, uh, campaign. If they all put in a million dollars, there's seven million dollars and we can blow up Drago style. That's funny. That's funny. I think maybe just uh, getting access to the mobile version uh, for reasonable, <laughs> reasonable investments. Good. OK, so we've got our two resources available. Uh, we have three resources that are going to be held up for two more turns. So. Basically, I need to do one research. Now, here's my thing. We can research as soon as I hide this. We can research. See, we already have like a massive, well, well learned ze format string zero day here. We could do this again. This is really the most important asset to compromise, hands down, right? Let's do, let's do that, that again. That DMZ firewall is your most important, and according to the campaign TTPs as well. Okay, but let me ask you this: If I own this and then Deb fifty three disappears, um, I no, can't you're see fine. this anymore. You're fine because you you have the terminal server. You've compromised something other than the remote user. Having access to the terminal server essentially gives you a quote unquote back channel. Okay. All right, so we're going to finish maxing out as, as well as I can see the research for that DMZ firewall because we definitely want to get in here. I'm trying to zoom in, but it's not working. Okay. We need to start doing some raffles, Jerry. We keep saying that. We need to do raffles for our, our, our users. All right, we have some faithful viewers here, and we need to do some raffles. So next week, let's throw some raffles out there. Okay. Yeah, we can totally do that. I mean, if we want, we could... The, the people who are watching on Simply Cyber's channel, could we could do a raffle right now. I know that that's not fair and rewarding to the people who have subscribed to ThreatGen. So um, next week, I'll add it to the list, uh, raffles, Okay. I'm adding it right now. What does everybody, what does what everybody think of her, uh, a nice raffle prize will be? We can do Steam keys. We can do um, certain, uh, the, I think the big, big, big raffles would be like a pro license, um, mm -hmm. something like that. I merch. Agree. We don't have that much merch we could send out right now, but we're working on it. Again, we need, merch could be Kickstarter campaign level. Um, so that kind of stuff. Carl, Carl, <laughs> Carl gotta... ruined my Carl ruined my KD ratio. <laughs> okay, covert attack prepared. Backdoor created. Oh, this is all looking nice. This is all looking nice. Let's do this. Here, we got a backdoor. I'm gonna change the. You know what we can also do, and I um I. Since it's a giveaway and not selling it, I think we could we could do like a um. I'd have to check with the creators, but we could do like the Threat Gen like soundtrack mm, albums, MP3 cool. kind of thing. All the music from the from the Red versus Blue. That could be cool. All right, guys. I feel Aaron Shabib. If you're watching, like this is going to you can't escape this. If you have baked in some type of anti Jerry. <laughs> You need call. to. You need to be quiet. <laughs> Let's go. So, cool, funny story. Greg, our SQA analyst, rubbed uh, Aaron the wrong way. He uh, he he kind of popped off at him in a in a funny way. But Aaron was like, "Okay, okay, we'll see." And he went God mode on Greg and made the entire game fail on Greg. Uh, so, you know, I'm telling you, there is, there's a possibility there are some anti Jerry Easter eggs coming. Oh my God. Because okay. you keep accusing us of it. I, I keep, I keep, uh, chirping. Keep yep. chirping. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
All right, well, we're going to try to do a um, god mode level attack with all of the research on a zero day that we spent all Chad. of our resources all of our research is uh doing reversing most of the really successful attacks are actually on enterprise side hmm, that's true i gotta say basically chad is a longtime friend of threat gen and has has been a friend of us literally since day one so thanks for showing up here today chad yeah, i'm gonna unscrew my microphone i've been i have to hold my microphone up give me a second I don't know. It sounds better when you when you can't hear you. <laughs> Clint has jokes, everybody. Okay, let's soundtrack let's for our... vinyl for Kickstarter backers. Yeah, I don't I don't think we're gonna fund vinyl. <laughs> That'd be awesome though. Pivot removed. Yay! I'm a Hold vinyl on, fan. Pivot available. Pivot removed. So hopefully it's uh, you lost you one know, and we... gained one. They're on to you though. One to... Okay. Oh, good timing. Yeah, that worked cleared out the really terminal well. server, but now you got the DMZ firewall. Pivot, host scan. Okay, and then I've got to cover your um, tracks. Yeah, you can't yet. You can't Shoot. yet. There's a one turn delay. All right. Um, crap. What am I going to do here? Uh, so they know. They know that we're on to them here, right? Um, oh, it was a covert attack. Yeah, so, so they're not on. So what's her, like, they just patched it? It just coincidentally? No, you can't do uh, cover your tracks on that firewall because it was already a covert attack. Okay, okay. So what should I do with four resources? I'm waiting to move laterally from here. Um... I could do fuzzing. I could do a password attack, which I don't feel great about on the gateway firewall. Um, I could try to compromise one of these guys up here, and, you know, and have like a Deb 53 2.0. Hmm. What do you think, Clint? I'm open to suggestions here. Um, you could pop the... I was looking got four resources i'm thinking research you know what i mean but at the same time you know what resources? hey yep. if you if you pop the 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 dmz switch um because there's a new mechanic that operates with they can't put edr on the switch they have to implement log analysis and i don't know how adept the ai is at implementing log collection and analysis right now Okay, well, I can only do a password attack because I don't have any vulnerabilities on it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll try it. I mean, who knows? Okay, so let's do a password attack and look for... I mean, I did look for public vulnerabilities earlier and it didn't work. Um, I was going to... I was thinking more like fuzzing and... Um, fuzzing and researching one thing but we'll do this yeah you can always i mean in, in you know and think about the way that that patch i mean that um vulnerabilities and patches are implemented you know you're you're always gonna there's a chance that you're you're not going to exhaust all vulnerabilities you know every time you um look for vulnerabilities so there's always a chance you can find more yeah uh, Alex uh, Goodwin actually points out a really interesting point. Instead of attacking the DMZ switch, how about attacking that uh, PCS switch? Wait, how did we see can't... the how did we see the PCS switch? Did you did you host scan the? Well, I mean, there you go, there you go. You already host. I didn't I didn't see how we got access to the uh, to the PCS or switch or how we saw it. Maybe I don't know either. But we have a pretty nasty exploit. Well, look, available. you actually the... password attack worked. Yeah. Wow. We got a whole bunch of new assets here. And those are all process control network assets. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's. Find, oh, let's look yeah. The switch is automatically revealed once you. Uh, that's a good point. The switch is automatically revealed um, once you compromise the DMC firewall. So, yeah, I was wrong. You, you would have been better off. Uh, Alex was right. You would have been better off popping the the PCS switch, which I didn't see. Okay. Well, that's okay. 
We got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, six unknown IPs. Let's go ahead and look at them all. Um, hold on. You know what I like about these streams? It enforces my intermittent fasting. Makes me skip lunch. All right, so we're going to scan all these devices. We're looking good. <laughs> right, Alex? <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, so Windows Server, Windows Computer, Network Device, Windows Computer. Okay, so we got a bunch yeah. of devices. Get the Windows Computers uh, because the Windows Computers... Or one of them is going to be the EW, and the devices are going to be. You're not in the process zones right now, so none of those devices are going to be HMIs. All right, let's hope uh, one of these five Easter eggs. Um, you know, I feel like we're on prices, right? And uh, you know, we're we're playing the the game where like, is it this one? Is it that one? And uh, you know, we, we've got, we won all five micro games. So we got five tokens and we're going to, we're going to throw them at all of these. So let's see what happens. Actually, Alex was right. There's two engineering workstations in this network map. Good. It improves our chances. There it is. We've got one right here. Yep. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now. And then HMI PCS, which I don't even know what that means. And HMI PCS, which I don't know what that means. And Those are HMIs. Control but you should attack that engineering workstation immediately. Okay, so should I search for, should I fuzz first? Oh, that's right, sorry. You don't even have any vulnerabilities on there yet. My bad. I'm yeah, you need to- fuzzing. That's two turns, right? I mean. Yeah. All right, and actually while I'm doing the fuzzing, I can I can um, look at these other uh, couple boxes, right? So let's do that. I slowly scroll over here. All right, let's fuzz. Okay, so we're gonna do some fuzzing, and then we're gonna look at this box. You can also try to, yeah, Greg's right. You can you can try to pop that EW with the password attack too. Uh, you, you know, I mean. Oh, oh, I see. Instead of, um, I see what you're saying. Yeah, let's do that. Or I could do evade uh, or, or pr prepare a network attack or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, it the options are numerous. Yeah, Everybody's got to, opinions. I'm trying to remove this from my uh, my list, unfortunately. It's You're at the mercy. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Greg, for the suggestion. Let's go ahead and do a password attack. Oh, jeez. CISA just released an update on North Korea state-sponsored cyber actors use Maui ransomware to target healthcare. It sucks. This just came off the wire right now. Okay. Working in healthcare and you're on the stream, you might want to check out CISA right now. Uh, why didn't it take that? Okay, ready? Here we go. Oh, Aaron, I'll have to talk to Eric. Uh, you know, actually, for what it's worth, guys, we actually have a pretty um, big eight-person uh, live stream, single elimination, multi-day tournament coming up uh, with, with prizes and everything. And uh, it's going to be like a big deal. I'm super excited about that. So there there is potential that Eric Taylor and I face off again in that uh contest so um stay tuned all right it looks like the attack on the engineering workstation with the password was unsuccessful but you've got uh some nice vulnerabilities uh coming oh you oh you didn't you didn't get any vulnerabilities on the ew no no i um i'm fuzzing so it's going to take another oh uh, okay 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 but that's okay you know, do, hey, I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, APTs, like sandworm, they're like rotisserie chicken, low and slow, right? Or, or like barbecue. And it's a good thing that um, 
it's a good thing that you kept the default of 75 turns instead of adjusting to 50 turns for two mm -hmm. reasons. Number one, you would only have five turns left. Number two, when you're moving slower, you need the extra turns. Yeah. The game is designed to be done with 75 turns, not 50. That was a mistake on my part in previous where it was defaulting to 50. That actually is a little bit of Aaron's fault too. Okay, so now we have we have a pretty nasty vulnerability on this PCS workstation and the engineering Don't, workstation. Yeah. yeah, check that EW. So we have directory traversal zero day. I'm thinking of doing some research on it. Right? It's a zero day. I think the chances of the AI knowing about that zero day is slim. Oh, so you're saying potentially just go for it versus doing research? Uh, yeah, I think there's a pretty good chance. I don't know. Not with the uh, the the Jerry uh, scalar variable that Aaron's in implemented. You're going to get it. All right. So I have. Jerry's going to get it, going to get it. I've attacked with a directory traversal this engineering workstation. It did not work. Surprise. Did not work. Okay, so I'm going to do some research now. Why is your evade network detection not uh, being consumed? I don't know. I don't know. It's... I am going to do um, prepare covert attack also. Alex Goodwin says the control PC is hardlined as well to the OT kit. Is that true? SCADA HMI? I designed the level and I can't remember. Okay, so what kind of attack can we do here? Heap overflow. We've done quite a bit of analysis on that. I, I kind of want to... I don't know. I, I'm like torn between doing research or like doing the covert attack because I'm afraid of attacking the control PCS and alerting without um, having. I got people on the back channel yelling at me to hit the control PCS. Oh boy. Okay. Here we go. I got a minute and 50 seconds to close these out. Here we go. All right, guys, here we go. Control PCS, attack, keep overflow Ooh. for the win. Or for the, for the check. Yeah, check. Here we go. Best wishes to all. Negative. Did not work. Did not work. The pattern was full. Uh, hmm. Okay. So. Do what you wanted now, to do originally. Get this skill level up on that zero day. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. That's a wise engineering workstation, though. It's EW42. <laughs> Let's do service enumeration. It knows you're guy. there. Here's an HMI PCS. We could do a password attack on. SCADA HMI. In real life, doing password attacks on process control equipment is almost always a win. Hmm. Well then. So many, so many default passwords. So many weak passwords. Let's go for it then. I don't know that that's coded into this simulation, though. I, I, I don't think that we made the mechanics that that smart. Yeah, it failed. That's all right. I mean, they could have been patched. So it, you're just going to see that it failed. We're still doing research here. Um, I was hoping prepare covert network attack. See, if we do that, it's three turns, and I... I I don't want to be held up for three turns. Um, oh, actually, you know what? We are going to do that because I'll do another research on this directory traversal bug since we're so close to the W. Uh, where's prepare covert attack? There it is. Okay, guys. David, he still wants to do password attack on this SWPCS. 
what I've done is, uh, David, I'm curious what your what your thinking is there. I'm going to do it this way. My idea is that I'm going to, this is going to free up two resources next time, and then I'm going to do directory traversal again, and then I'll be able to attack. There are currently not varying levels of difficulty, uh, Aaron. The three maps have different levels of complexity. My pivot was, okay, cool. Okay. So now we're gonna do another research here on this guy. <laughs> Chad, Chad's living that life, huh? Okay. Come on, close. Yeah. Hey, Stella's right. And Carrie, if you end up taking that um, TCM Academy persist, uh, persistent practical ethical hacking course, he actually uses Cherry uh, in his in his studies. David says the idea is to get another pivot before you lose this one. If the terminal service gets cleaned, it has EDR or the DMZ firewall has EDR. The clock's ticking. Yeah, I, I am spending a lot of uh, capital on this DMZ firewall, so. Let's end the turn and hope that, I mean, we're pretty close. We're like two turns away from, from having what I think is a pretty good chance of um, attacking this engineering workstation, right? So the next turn should have it. Yeah, you see how we're completing both of these next turn? And then it's game time. Let's go. Wish me luck. No whammies, no whammies. Big bucks, no whammies. All right, cool. All right, so now we're good, guys. So we've got, still have access. We have this massive advantage here. Right here, this should work. Do it. God dang, man. Oh, hit it again. Hit it again. Again, for anybody who has kids out there that watch Bluey, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Clear. Oh my God. Are you oh, serious? what is going on? All right. Well, I have uh, a high level attack on this PCS, right? Heap overflow, pretty good. Attack this one. I think you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just feel like you're getting bad luck. Mm-hmm. Not gonna say anything. Come on, man. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Yeah. Aaron Shabib. Aaron said that the reason he thinks that the network detection isn't clearing out is because the blue team probably doesn't have any IDS in that zone to detect it with. Okay, look at this. We have zero day well researched. Yeah, you just I think you're just getting stuck with they, you know, maybe it's a very difficult exploit to uh to get right. Mm -hmm. You okay, know, it's so a, look, first of all, a heap overflow is difficult in real life. What are you hitting it with? A format string. Just hit it with that. Just the vulnerability. No, no, is still this there. is this is the PCS switch. Oh I, I was thinking maybe getting a little bit of uh, a second persistence mechanism. Right, I'm getting you know spicy. What, I mean? what do you think? What's that? What he think? said. Uh, somebody said, "Ask well, what's that new icon in the upper left to level one? Oh, uh, that's the covert, uh, net covert attack, is it? Or yeah, this is pro pro covert attack, and this is network evasion. Yep. So you know, per David, he was thinking take this over, and then continue hammering on these things. I. I think you just need to keep hitting those engineering workstations that you have high vulnerabilities on. I think you're just getting unlucky. Okay. Well, I've got a minute and a half. Is there any other type of scanning I can do from, from anywhere to find more HMI stations or this is it? I'd no, have to take over this PCS firewall. No, you're, you'd have to get into the actual process zone to get any further, get any more. I think you're just getting unlucky. All right, here we go. Because if, if the vulnerability was fixed, it wouldn't be there.
Oh, come on, I'm That's Mr. Him. Miyagi's best defense. No be there. Go! I'm right. getting spicy. Let's keep going. I guess, right? I mean, I feel like we have to have better than a 50-50 chance. Yeah, what are you attacking it with again? I mean, if it's, if it's a direct Directory traversal, traversal, that is not a difficult... Statistically, in the code, that is not a difficult vulnerability. Okay. Um... See, even Aaron says you are inordinately unlucky. Thank you, Aaron. Come on. Let's go. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> okay, now I'm starting to think that he threw some code in there. Like, seriously, look at this. All right. Let's... All right. I'm really kind of... All right. So Hey, yeah, thinking... yeah, David E has a has a point. I mean, your persistence is really working because the firewall's not cleaned off, the you know, the the whole the 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 persistence and covert aspect of the TTPs for Sandworm is really holding up here. Yeah, that's true. So I could do more research on this and do a password attack on this. Yeah. That's one option. Yeah, because you you do need another pivot. Just in case they clear off the firewall, you do need another pivot into the PCS so you can keep operating. I feel like a degenerate gambler where I'm like, well, I should just try to hit it one more time. <laughs> I'm due. I'm due. This is my turn. <laughs> one more. One more. <laughs> Like if host name starts with EW and user equals Jerry. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. That didn't work either. Looks like I, I tried it, David E. Yep, I tried it. Fails. So many fails. <laughs> so even Aaron is like, wow, that's crazy. All right, hold on. I got to close this action log here. All right, so what are we going to do? We've got three resources. Um, we could do it. I don't want to see. I don't want to do anything that's more than like one turn because um, I don't want to yeah. do anything more than one turn because I want to be able to attack next turn. You know what I'm saying? Public volunts is about the only thing you can do that's useful. Well, and I can scan this box down here, too. Oh, do that. Scan that box. Or service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, what? <laughs> it's like the, the hot zone for my, my interface is jacked up. All right, and then let's do um, public bones. I'm going to have to reboot my computer after this. Here we go. Let's go. Let's hope. Hopefully this is an HMI. Um, that's the other, that's the other, oh no. Yeah. Pivot removed. Okay. All right. That sucks. Um, so now you're relegated back to the DMZ, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, pop that, pop that PCS switch. Yeah. Well, that's why we, oh, I can't see it. Oh, because the firewall got removed. So you got to pop the firewall again. And the firewall doesn't have any vulnerabilities on it right now. Oh. Why can't I see anything from um, this switch? And why is cover tracks an option here? Hmm. Wait, where? Where's cover tracks an option? 
on oh. on DMZ oh. Switch. Yeah, I think that's odd. Uh, as a as an embedded device, you, well, I mean, you could if you have control of the switch, you can do things to cover your tracks. Or... Okay, well, hold on. So what? What based on what we see on my topology that I have access to, what can get me back to the engineering workstation, the DMZ firewall, and the SWPCS? Yeah. I can't see the SWPCS, so is it? You gotta pop the firewall DMC again. Fire? Yeah. Okay. So then I guess I gotta do fuzzing. Yeah. Or fuzzing or reverse engineering. God, that sucks. Uh, I'm really uh, reversing three turns. Um, I feel like that's a lot of turns considering where we are. Yeah. I mean, we still got. I mean, it's not a race against the turn count right now, but. The blue team is on to us, and it's a race against the blue team fixing stuff. All right. Well, I did reverse. Okay. Okay, here we go. We are doing Sandworm, which is right here. For those who are joined us a little late, Sandworm is a threat actor APT out of Russia, uh, known for multiple attacks, including the Ukrainian electrical grid uh, attack, uh, which caused catastrophic uh, damage to the electric power company there in Ukraine in 2015. We are emulating it as a red team in the threat gen red versus blue portal right now. I've done OSID, spear phishing, foothold, lateral movement. We found the engineering workstation and we were unable to do the takedown HMI phase. So that's where we are currently. We're trying to get back into the electronic, uh, excuse me, the engineering workstation. Yeah. So David E has a suggestion and Aaron agrees that at this point they upgrade electronic social engineering and go fishing because at this point, at least for right now, all Windows computers are susceptible to phishing um, and um, email campaigns we do have on the roadmap for real um to actually be able to disconnect uh remove enterprise applications or and or disconnect certain ics devices from internet connectivity which would eliminate social engineering threats um but for right now that is not a factor so you could fish your way back into the pcs with a lucky strike well I'll tell you right now, I just did reversing and spent three turns and there was nothing found on the domain firewall, a uh, DMZ firewall. So they've got that thing. Oh. Up. Are we thinking attack campaign or spear phishing? Oh, spear phishing is going to be better chances. Attack campaign is sustained. Um, I think at this point, I mean, yeah, spear Aaron's Aaron's a spear fishing. Get your better chances because by the time almost, you set up your campaign. Yeah, I almost wish, and this is nobody's fault but my own. I almost wish I hadn't done that reverse engineering and just spent those three turns on spear fishing. David E. LOL. He's like, I have some resources. Look at me, look at me. Uh, I, it's all right. I feel so defeated right now. Well, you know, we are, we are doing it. It's just that five, we had five bites at the apple. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Just got unlucky rolls for real. Okay. So we just got two resources back. So what did we finish? Oh, uh, spear fishing. So we have, um, two resources for one turn. Anything worth doing there? I don't feel like there is. We already did reversing. We didn't get really anything else. Yeah, any research can take you more than one turn, I think, at this point. Yeah, all right. Um, let's see. Just looking, just looking. Everything seems to take more than one turn, so we'll just sit on it. All right, it's not over yet. We're still. Come on. <laughs> it was like you were playing someone 
uh, it was like you were playing something from EA uh, games with the type of roles you were getting. <laughs> I know, right? Seriously. Like someone put in the, uh, like, you know how like on Madden football, every once in a while, the, the team you were playing would just turn into like superhuman. Like it would be unreal. That yep. every once in a while. Boom. Um, Aaron, Aaron Shabib. I missed that, Aaron. Okay, so what did we get? I feel like... Oh. Here's a new t-shirt idea. Another unlucky roll for Jerry. All right, so we've got five resources. Um, would it do us any good to take out the DMZ recorder, to take out... Um, to attack the VPN. So um, if you attack the DMZ recorder as a historian, if you attack that and control it, you'll know about the PLCs, but you don't have control over them. What about the terminal server? No, that doesn't get us anywhere. Nope. PCS uh, firewall. Nope. That's all buttoned up. Yeah. PCS switch. Yeah. I can't see. Uh, the server firewall I can see, but that's not really valuable. Hmm. I mean, nope. is, is, am I unable to get to the PCS network now? Like, is that basically it? No, I mean, well, number one, uh, with the PCS firewall, or the, I'm sorry, the DMZ firewall without it having any vulnerabilities, then the answer is Yes um unless you get a lucky strike with some sort of camp social engineering campaign or spear phishing and of course the alternative route would be to hoof it but that's not part of the ttps for sandworm so we're not gonna hoof it yeah exactly so i guess we can do spear phishing again but i feel like it's a shot in the dark because with so many endpoints that i don't know yeah or we can i mean set up that's really the only your chance or Continue to try to research, and hopefully you get a lucky strike on a vulnerability that hasn't been found by the blue team. Okay. On the DMZ firewall? Yeah. Okay, I like that idea. You know, there's a chance that the blue team hasn't found every vulnerability on that firewall. And the, the well, yeah. Who I don't I mean you don't know how many vulnerabilities it had in the first place. I think it has, yeah, Aaron says spear fishing plus fuzzing. All right, I'll do it as soon as I get my action tree. Running out of time. Yeah, 10 turns. Or it's. Game over, man. Well, I mean, if I lose, I lose. But we, we did. Um... We came close. I mean, it's not over yet, obviously, but um, we were we got through most of it, right? We are not sandworm. Oh, look at them patching the crap out of all this stuff. There's another engineering workstation down here we discovered. Um, so um, Bob Bob is asking, is what Jerry is encountering indicative of a real world campaign? I mean, yeah, it could be. I mean, it could be. It just depends on how good uh, the defense is of, of who you, you're attacking. I mean, put it this way. If it wasn't indicative of a real world campaign, then these campaigns would be compromising every major company in the world. So obviously there are companies out there and organizations out there that are really good with their defenses. Oh my God. So fuzzing didn't find anything. Uh, fuzzing didn't find anything. So a password attack. We can't even do that. Can we do hmm we're kind of uh screwed here <laughs> maybe i really should have gotten one more resource at some point like another hacker resource or yep. whatever these are called pivot available pivot available pivot available please be somewhere we need no oh so what do we do here? Do we um, 
keep doing do we... spear fishing yeah. and it, that's that's going to be useless to us that's way over in the user network okay let's go all right so we still got two two resources oh we should do research i don't even know why i didn't do that oh i didn't do it because if, if we had successfully popped someone we would have needed the attack um let's do this yeah aaron's a good one. pilfering data if you have a pop box pilfer the data it improves your it improves your chances of a of a successful spearfish okay uh thank you Turn 69 coming up. All right. Yeah. And maybe we can pilfer data from this guy too. Nope. We're so close to the end and I don't want to miss anything. I've already peed my pants twice. Oh my God. All right. Um, we've got two more turns on the spear fishing. Let's go ahead and just. Oh, shots fired by Bob Bob. Oh. Uh. Well, I appreciate Bob Bob calling me a blue team guru. It's very thoughtful of you, Bob Bob. <laughs> I will say, you know, red teaming seems pretty straightforward, but it is a art form. Here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. And it looks like our spear fishing failed. Ugh. All right, one last, you know, throw throw at the wall here. The best chance you have now is yeah, try try to land a lucky strike on an HMI with a spear fishing attack, and then pop the ICS. But with four turns left, I think it's game over. Yeah, I don't know. Even if uh, reverse engineering, if I had done social engineering, social engineering instead, if it would have made a world difference. There we go. You know the thing about this game. Anybody who's played this game long enough knows that like how angry it can make you and how defeated it can you can feel like you know an AI, right? You you start to like you re you you like you like start to think that that the AI is like. You take it personal and you feel defeated and you're just like, ah. Oh. This is true. I'm just slowly. Then you start blaming the developers. Okay, so our spear fishing attack failed. Um, if you if you weren't ready, cue your surprise face. Um, we're on turn 74. Uh, it does not look like we're going to win, uh, which is a bummer, obviously. Uh, let's go ahead and, I don't know, just for giggles, I'm going to install Mount ransomware on this guy real quick, <laughs> just, just to be upset. Although, sometimes installing... Installing ransomware is probably not going to work if they've already fixed any vulner uh, antivirus vulner uh, issues. All right, we covered our tracks. Not that it matters. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a password attack on the DMZ firewall, which if I get it, I'm going to throw my microphone against the wall. <laughs> what is that? Your sure SMB? Oh, there it is. Yeah. No, this is a blue Yeti. Okay, so uh, blue well, look team at the weather system. We've got a red team score of zero. <laughs> How is that possible? We just we had uh, more penalties. We had more penalties than we did bonuses. You get penalties for losing pivots. I do think that we need to adjust the score. I think losing pivots should be less. I think it needs to be less of a penalty. <laughs> Aaron Shabib, deny the gateway firewall out of spite. Uh, I lost my pivots. Uh, spear fishing, which is a huge hallmark of Sandworm. We were 50%. Obviously, the last uh, couple turns uh, is where these other three spear fishes came from. So we did it first. We did well. Obviously, there was no physical uh, intrusion ever done because Sandworm operates from, um, you know, remotely. 
um, no denial of service attacks because we were actually doing the um, the uh, 2015 Ukrainian attack, which was where they destroyed the electrical, uh, actual cyber physical systems. Um, resource utilization, 98%. Personally, that's a win for me. I do like keeping it north of 95. Um, a lot of pivots lost. Let's look at the, I mean, there's no real, we can look at the blue team's topology, but it doesn't matter. I had them. I had them. I was up, I was up in this space right up in here. Yeah. Um, you know, part of me wonders if I should have tried to break the PCS firewall and got in here and gone directly. But you know what? What it could have should have, right? All right. Well, hopefully y'all learned a little bit about, um, let's do this, Clint. Hopefully everybody learned a little bit about Sandworm, about MITRE attack, about the 2015 Ukrainian um, electrical grid attack and how Sandworm basically used OSINT spear phishing, lateral movement in order to eventually take over um, systems that were connected to HMIs and destroy those systems. It sent, um, it sent Ukraine into a bit of a, a, a a, you know, an issue with power. I know uh, on Christmas 2015, they had a blackout for a little bit. I think that was related to a different attack. Uh, but again, that was also attributed to Russia. So this is what it looks like. Clint, any thoughts on what we saw today versus a more, you know, realistic version of this type of operation? Um, Obviously, like we said that, you know, most of the sandworm and destroyer attacks were on electric grid so we weren't completely comparing apples to apples but it did have a SCADA system so i mean all the only difference is the in in the simulation the only difference is the icons you're seeing so that was pretty good but i think we we mentioned it already and that you know you will see this in real life if we do have some good defenders out there Otherwise, you know, if we didn't have resilient networks and good defenders, then we would probably see U.S. electric grid and infrastructure being taken out, you know, in, in just like Ukraine did every time our adversaries got pissed off at us. I mean, think about it. You've got, you know, you've got other actors out there like North Korea and Iran and, you know, anybody else out there that would love to take out our grid. So it just because ICS has notorious issues it doesn't mean that all industrial control systems are easy to take out and hack right i mean so there's a saving grace there um so and i and i think that's the best way um i think that that's the best way to explain it is that yes industrial control systems have inherent weaknesses but industrial control systems are not inherently easy to take down all the time and i think that's what we demonstrated here because i i, yep. I think we held true to the ttps of sandworm yeah i agree that was a really fun uh experience i enjoyed doing that um before clint and i got on live we actually were talking about how uh sandworm because they have been around so long and have such a history that it's quite possible for us to do the 2015 Ukrainian attack sandworm. We could also do sandworm uh, when they did in destroyer. Uh, we could do sandworm when they did um, Olympic crusher or whatever the Olympics one was. Not Petya, which was a wiper, uh, much much more uh, catastrophic kind of like denial of service attack. So we have a couple uh, fun options that we can do um, for let's play. So if you're interested. Uh, we can definitely do that. China Peacock's asking, are you going to simulate more APTs? Absolutely. We rotate. So here's the thing. Um, if you aren't already subscribed to the Threat Gen YouTube channel, uh, you may be watching this on Josh Mason's or Simply Cyber's YouTube channel, and that's absolutely fine. But if you go to youtube.com slash Threat Gen, which you can see at the bottom uh, over there in the corner on the banner at the bottom, if you go to that and hit subscribe, we do these lives Let's Plays every Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we flip-flop between piloting the blue team and piloting the red team. So in two weeks' time, China, we will be doing V2 
the red team and I will have, you know, Clint and I and the community will have come up with another um, APT scenario, whether it's a different, more evolved version of Sandworm based on uh, different uh, attacks they did or, you know, North Korea or, or who knows, right? Uh, we'll have it, but next week will be a blue team and maybe we'll be tying it to some type of framework, whether it's CIS 18, this cybersecurity framework, ISO 27001. We try to make it interesting, not just a, a playthrough of the simulator, but actually have educational value. So if that's interesting to you, strongly encourage um, giving the channel a follow or a sub or wh whatever it is that YouTube does. All right, thank you. Uh, I think that's gonna do it for us today, Clint. I, I appreciate you doing the commentary. I appreciate all of you uh, who stayed with us and played along, learned a little bit, had a good time. Obviously I'll be DM and Aaron um, after this to talk about the, the dice rolls. Um, you know, maybe I can get a new 20 sided die. Uh, I'll order one on Amazon, Clint, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I think um, number one, you know, uh, I think it's important you know that we sounds like it's very important that we get some cool swag we're gonna have to get like you know we're gonna have to get like a thread gen red versus blue big giant 20-sided die i think we're gonna mm -hmm. um maybe maybe get some shirts that blame carl blame the dice blame the roll uh things like that but uh you know i think that my last my last thoughts here are um keep you know th these streams give us a lot of ideas for content every every comment you make give us ideas for the streams you know go moving forward but also for content right um we are at the phase of development right now to where we're going to be developing a lot of new scenarios and a lot of new new network environments and stuff like that so keep commenting keep making requests um and you know, you'll you'll see some really cool stuff coming out uh, pretty soon, and I think that we should close it out, Jerry, by mentioning the tournament you mentioned earlier. We have a, a invite only tournament with uh, cybersecurity pros, um, which is going to be a pilot test run for a league that we will be establishing uh, after the tournament. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. If you've ever watched me versus Josh Mason, me versus Eric Taylor, it's going to be very similar to that player streaming their feed other players streaming their feed and then clint and another commentator shout casting that event it will be an eight team tournament so there will be three rounds of competition with a final uh victor announced uh and cool prizes and it'll just be a fun overall experience so uh definitely stay tuned we will be uh socializing that obviously well in advance so it won't it won't creep up on you that's going to do it for uh, this week's episode. Again, hit like and subscribe if you got value out of this. And if you want to see more of this content every Wednesday at 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we're doing it. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you next time.